But before we get started, I would like to show you a quick video. Now, this is where a man might spend most of his time in the home of the 21st century. This equipment here will allow him to carry on normal business activities without ever going to an office away from home. This console provides a summary of news relayed by satellite from all over the world. Now, to get a newspaper copy for permanent reference, I just turn this button. And out it comes. When I've finished catching up on the news, I might uh, check the latest weather. This same screen can give me the latest report on the stocks I might own. A telephone is this instrument here, a mock-up of a possible future telephone. This would be the mouthpiece. Now, if I want to see the people I'm talking with, I just turn the button and there they are. Over here, as I work on this screen, I can keep in touch with other rooms of the house through a closed circuit television system. With equipment like this in the home of the future, we may not have to go to work. The work would come to us. In the 21st century, it may be that no home will be complete without a computerized communications console. Thank you. Isn't that a fun video? When that video came out, I was 13 years old. And so it dates me a little bit. But I can tell you that the last thing I was ever thinking about at that point was ever even having a job, let alone having an office. And as it turned out, my first real job was selling life insurance door to door. I used to run what was called a debit. Has anybody ever heard of a debit before? OK, we have a few people. Well, for those of you that don't know, a debit is where we would go door to door and we would collect premiums from people on a weekly basis. Now, um, the only technology I really needed to know at that particular time was the subtle difference of the click between the click of a deadbolt lock and the click of a 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> and I'll tell you, in the door-to-door -door business, that's a very important life skill to have. But the bottom line was, I didn't have an office. I worked out of my car. Office wasn't even an option for me then. And the fact of the matter is, I didn't need an office. I just needed people to see and a place to see them. So we've come a long way since Walter Cronkite. As a matter of fact, today, everything that he talked about can be done right on, our, right on our phones. And probably most of us find it's easier to do on our iPads. Today, I operate my business in a virtual office environment. I don't have any real brick and mortar office. And so that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Now, here's the thing. There's more to being a virtual advisor than just incorporating technology into your business. Because as technology advances, for me, the value of and the need to be more high touch is greater than ever. Now, it's interesting what Steve talked about relationships. I think you'll find at the end of this talk that that is the takeaway here, is that the relationships are what this business is all about at every level, and the friendships that you make. And that carries over into your clientele as well. So today, I'm going to share with you why I went to a virtual office environment what it looks like, the specific tools that I'm using, because I want you to be able to, to, to take those home with you. I'll tell you a little bit about how it's working for me, and I'll also share with you some lessons that I've learned and some specific takeaways. Now, I give you a disclaimer. I realize that a lot of you here are already engaged in technology at some level, so I acknowledge that. But what I'm hoping to do is I'll hopefully give you a couple of small ideas, or as I heard recently, something um, a few small hinges that'll help you swing some big doors. So let's talk about why I went into a virtual office environment. I didn't just wake up one morning and decide to go virtual. It kind of evolved, but I was open to the idea because I've, I've always tried to be adaptable. You know, this is a meeting not unlike our meeting today where we have a speaker and the speaker is presenting to an audience, and he says, the picture is pretty bleak, gentlemen. The world's climates are changing. The mammals are taking over. 
And we all have brains about the size of a walnut. So I use that as my metaphor for being adaptable. Clearly, the dinosaurs weren't that adaptable. But we have to be in our business. And I'll tell you, uh, I think it might be the most important life skill to have. And I've, I've been in the business a long time, as many of you have. But even if you've been in the short time, you've seen tremendous change. And that would just continue to accelerate. I realized one day that about 65% of my clients lived over two hours away from where my office was. It just kind of occurred to me. And we had built a house on the water two hours away from where we were, where we were living. And the most important factor was we were empty nesters. And that is a great thing, let me tell you. But we wanted to live on the water. So I was trying to figure out how in the world can I make those kind of things happen? Can I live on the water and still maintain my business? Well, the fact of the matter is 65% uh, of my clients really didn't care where I was because they were spread out over 20 states. And really, more and more, I realized that I needed less and less as it, as it related to the office space. Most of the programs, when I stopped and thought about it, most of, our, most of the things we used on our computers were all web-based anyway. So I really found out I, I didn't have a need for a, a traditional server. The clients weren't coming into the office as much for a variety of reasons, because they were, they were out of state or because I was going to see them, or we would see them at their office or some other place. So I'm, I'm thinking, why do I need this big office? And if I don't have an office, then I don't need a receptionist, and I'll need some of the trappings that go along with that. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dan Sullivan, the strategic coach, but he's, he told a story years ago that um, he took 11 weeks off every year. And somebody challenged him on that. And they said, how is it that you can take 11 weeks off? And he said, well, sir, I would contend that uh, I might take my 11 weeks off at a resort, but the only difference is you're taking your 11 weeks off sitting at your desk. <laughs> How many of you find that you're not as productive when you go into the office, that your pr productivity goes down when you're in the office? And I was talking to someone yesterday about this, that when they're in the office, there's people interrupting, they want your time, they want your signature on something, and it's awful hard. That's a big challenge for all of us is, is to delegate. So I realized I don't need an office. I just need a place to focus, and I need the tools to do my job. So in reality, all I did was I just took technology and used it to create a business model around my lifestyle. Now, the one thing I was always good at in our business was relationship building. And frankly, my biggest fear was that I would lose those relationships that I built. Now. Let me describe what my business looks like. Because you might be thinking, well, that's easy for you because you, you have a different kind of a business. We have a process-driven financial planning firm. We manage assets, which generates recurring revenue for us. We sell insurance through the implementation of our financial plan. We don't market insurance as our first-line product, but we implement for people. I like to say we're in a relationship-based service business. And that has, that has ramifications. We get our, mar our marketing's done primarily through referrals and personal observations, like many of you use. Now, this is what my old office looked like. I had the traditional trophies and honors, plaques and pictures. But for me, I found this place to be a bit of a time trap. So this is what I did. I moved my office up to the cloud. It's kind of what it looks like. This is what it really looks like. This is our home on the water, and this is me making some appointments and, and interacting with clients on my deck. But this is what it feels like. So again, I don't have a brick and mortar office, but I apply the same standards, but just a different business model. So what do we do for office space? Well. We use Regis Office Centers. They're a national company. They have offices, I'm sure, here that you can rent by the hour. It's a professional office space with receptionist and, and in, in any of the high-end services that you would want and expect from, from a um, business office. So it provides a nice image for us. And I rent by the hour when I see clients there. And that works just fine. And I can do it all over the country. In fact, if I had a client meeting here, I could have rented rented an, um, a Regis office here for the hour. 
It's a professional environment, and I can use it internationally. We also go see our clients. It's because we, we have our clients in 20 different states. We go to their house. We visit them in their offices. Sometimes we stay at their house. They insist. One client told me, uh, you have to come and stay at our house because we wouldn't have built this house had it not been for the financial planning we'd done for you. So I have a special, I was the first guest in their guest room. It was kind of, kind of a neat thing. Sometimes they stay at our house when they come back home. We, we live on the water. It's fun to have company. We talk business. We freely mix business and pleasure. We, we, we have fun together. We carve out time to do business. And, and we, we, it's a great lifestyle. But again, I don't need an office per se. I just need a place to focus. And technology changed the way I do business. So now I have a paperless office. And this was huge because the paperless office really freed us up, and it also freed up a lot of overtime. You think about all the effort that goes into filing papers. How, how many people here have paperless office? Okay, so there's some opportunity there for people to buy some software today. It's a, it's a, it's a worthy goal, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. I use social media a little bit. I'm just starting to, to wade in to uh, LinkedIn to interact with other uh, uh, corporate executives. And that's something that you should look into. And of course, our broker dealer requires that we have a compliance uh, monitor on that. But if you haven't used that, that's a great place to start, I think. We use the e-signature um, uh, app so that my staff can send me papers. I've signed papers since I've been here. And um, I can just do it digitally and send them back. And then they go forward and just uh, do what they need to do with them. And I don't think it's long before we start doing transactions in our business on our iPads. You know, we already go to, if you go to Nordstrom, if you go to Apple Store, you're, you're doing the transaction right there, right there on, the, on their phones and on their iPads. And I don't think we're that far away um, in terms of our financial services industries. So now I'd like to just go into a little bit more and talk to you about some specific tools we're using. But a couple of caveats. I don't know really that much about technology. You might find that odd, I'm talking about technology, but I don't know a lot about it. I just know what I want it to do for me. And that's a, that's a really key point. If you're going to get into technology and you're going to ramp up what you're doing, I, I highly recommend you get one of these guys. I affectionately call them a geek, and uh, you shouldn't really laugh at them because they're born this way. They can't help it. <laughs> I, I've always... I've always wondered why, um, and no offense to anyone who might be one or have one, but I always wonder why you don't really see that many female geeks. But I think there's a big market for that out there. But I highly recommend that you get one of these. The six areas that I use uh, technology in are mobility, productivity, accessibility, communication, delegation, and outsourcing. Now, there's a really big point here when you start talking about using technology, and that is the more things that you can get to integrate with each other and interface with each other, the better your life will be. I mean, that's just a, a key element because you don't want to have five or six different programs or apps that don't talk to each other. And the more that they talk to, to each other, the more efficient you'll be. This, this, is, this is, excuse me. This is what your, our typical life looks like. You know, how do we do this? We have so many things. It's how do you keep your calendar full? How do you find the right employees? How do you, how do you leverage your memberships? How do you, how do you volunteer for NAFA and MDRT? How do you do all these things? And so for me, the technology helps me to manage this, this crazy life that we have. I use Redtail technology as my primary CRM, or client relationship management software. It's a, it's a web-based app. It, has, it, it hosts our email, which means that every time I send an email on Outlook, it, it gets stored in this red tail. And what's great about that is, you know, if you call your, uh, and maybe some of your offices are like this, many property and casualty offices are set up this way, but this was a first for us. Anybody in, that's involved in our company, any of our staff, from wherever they are, can go on to red tail and find out what kind of conversations we've been having with clients, whether through notes, or through um, email exchanges. And that's a big plus for us. Obviously, it has our database, which allows us to seg segment our clients and, and, and uh, easily contact them. 
And it also has a document imaging uh, element to it. Now, we don't use this document ele uh, imaging element because we had already started with something else before we find Redtail, and it's, you know, we have 10 years of files already up on the cloud. It's, it's, um, it's a big challenge to move it. So that we, we're sticking with this other program. In fact, does your office look like this? This, this was a really the driver for us. I used to say I have a good filing system, but I have a better piling system. You know, I have piles of things that I'm going to get to or, or not. And it was a good test every now and then to stop and actually just go to the bottom of that pile and see what was so important eight months ago that you stuck it on your desk. Uh, probably wasn't important anymore. We tried to get away from that. And so we use a company called Cabinet NG, or now they call themselves Cabinet Safe. And what's great about this is there's no more filing. Everyone has a scanner. You scan in the document, it's accessible, it's retrievable, I can pull it up on my phone, although you can't read it. You can pull it up on my iPad, and it's very, it's very nice to do right in front of a client. We can get any history, applications, case notes, uh, wills, tax returns, anything that you might uh, need in order to uh, support your sales process. And I find that most clients, don't, mo most clients just don't want paper anymore, especially older people. You know, there's a, people will say to me, well, my older clients, they don't like technology, but I would argue with that. I, I'm going to say right now that I would venture to, to guess that m the majority of people on Facebook are probably over 50 now. The younger people have moved on to something else. We're just looking at pictures of our grandchildren and seeing what our kids are doing or our MDRT members. So we try not to generate paper. We use a VOIP phone system, voice over internet phone. And what's great about that is we can take them anywhere. So my wife and I spent February in Naples, Florida, which is great because we had a brutal, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about weather in Minnesota, okay? But it was brutal on the East Coast because if you get two inches of snow on the East Coast, it's Armageddon. So, so it was great to be in Florida where it was 70 degrees every day and playing golf and, and, and we were able to work from there because again, we're, we have a virtual office environment. We can take it anywhere we want to go. Unplugged our phones, plugged them into the router at the house where we were staying and uh, life goes on. So we were able to get our work done and have some fun and most importantly be warm. When I get a voicemail, what's cool about that is when I get a voicemail, it comes to me as an email with a, with a WAV file so I can play it, I can listen to it, I can decide to answer it, I can forward it on to staff and have somebody else deal with it. So it makes it uh, very efficient. We use a company called, uh, you've probably heard of CopyTalk. CopyTalk is a mobile dictation service. So it's pretty inexpensive. I think NAPA offers the discounts, at least they used to. And what's great about CopyTalk is that if I see a client, whether it's in an office environment, in their home, a restaurant or whatever, I can immediately dictate notes to CopyTalk and they'll be emailed back to me. And I can either delegate that to staff, I can clean it up myself, and either way we can store it in our, in our client database because CopyTalk interfaces with Redtail. So that's a key thing for us. Here's a cabinet, in, in cabinet safe logo, by the way, if you want to look it up online, if you want to Google it later. Oops, sorry. We use uh, Money Guide Pro as our primary financial planning tool now. We, use, we also use NavaPlan, which is a pretty robust plan. I think it's probably overkill for most people these days. But we don't do the planning anymore because, with that software because it's very labor intensive. What we do is we outsource that to a, a person in Oakland, California. Now, I live in Maryland, so I flew out there and I met this person. All she does is financial plans all day. She's a fee-only financial planner. She's not interested in any product or anything like that. I pay her by the plan, it's a project fee, and then we're able to download that through our secure vault, and we're able to get that information and, and put our own stamp on it, put it on our paper, massage it, and then we can present that to the client. It's tremendously uh, efficient compared to me hiring a planner with benefits and having to do all the HR things that go with that. But Money Guide Pro is one we're really enamored with right now because Money Guide Pro is all, is all uh, internet-based, it interfaces with Redtail, it interfaces with all of our account aggregation software, and it integrates with Morningstar. Inter interfaces with our, we use a lot of uh, SEI investments, so inter interfaces with that. So everything's talking to each other, but the thing I like it the about it the most is that I can co-plan with my clients. Now being the control freak that I am, or the trying to be a reformed control freak, let's say, 
um, I was saying, well, I want to do the planning. That's what they're paying for, right? Because if I give it to them, then what's my, what's my value proposition? But what I'm finding is, is that we, we build the plan for the client, but in that planning software are so many what-if scenarios, and they can play with what if inflation is higher or lower, or what if I want to retire earlier or later, or what if our expenses are higher for health care or lower. And it's a, very, it's a reasonably um, inexpensive piece of software, but the clients love it because they can log in, and we can, we can limit what they see and what they can play around with. But what's really great about it is through an interface called Yodley, Y-O-D-L-E-E, -E, they can upload all their accounts from their 401ks and their bank accounts and anything else that we don't happen to manage and throw it into that um, scenario. It also allows us to take a look at that stuff. So that's very helpful. We use Dropbox a lot. Any, how many people are using Dropbox? Okay, I think, I think it's become um, fairly common. The way we use it is we, use, we don't store things on it. Uh, we don't store any personal client information on it. We use it as a file transfer system. I can get it information from my iPad. I can get information from my phone or from my laptop. What we do is we, we share files. So, for instance, we don't print out file copies of any presentations that we make. I keep that on my iPad. I go just go in the Dropbox, and I'm looking at that. The client might be looking at paper. Or if they don't want paper, we just have a little projector, one of those projectors that we get from Brookstone, and we flash it up on the wall right out, right out of the iPad. And so the client can just look at it, and we can... We can look at the documents, we can make the presentations. And what's also great about Dropbox is when we do our online meetings, we use GoToMeeting. I, I find that Skype is not as um, efficient uh, for me. I, there, probably, there, there probably is a way to share files. I, I just haven't discovered that yet because GoToMeeting is so easy, plus it has a camera. So a client and I can look at each other, we can make that, that human interaction. Uh, but I can sh take documents out of Dropbox and show them what's happening, and they can ask questions. So it's a great interactive tool. And then, like I said before, we use a program called Sign Easy. And uh, Sign Easy is a program. It's free. Um, I bought the business version because it's a little bit more robust, maybe $90 a year. But what this allows me to do is to go in on my iPad, take a stylus, and sign my name like I normally would, and preserve that signature. So then when, when my staff says, I need you to sign some forms, they're, they're already in Dropbox. I simply grab them from Dropbox. I sign them with that little signature thing. I can put a date on it, send it back to Dropbox. They can retrieve it and send it on to the vendor. So no paper, no trees were killed in this process. Everything was done paperless. Now, occasionally, we do have to get the client to sign it, uh, a wet copy, and so that complicates things. But to the degree that we're able to do digital signatures and, and not get into paper, we're, we're all about that. We use um, a program called Evernote. Evernote is um, an archiving system where you can take notes on your iPad, you can scan things in. If you see an article that you, that you liked on the internet, um, you can convert it to web text, I mean from web to text. And then you can store those things and archive them in, in Evernote, which is great because you can get it, again, off of any type of apparatus that you might be using. And I think it, used, it works. I, I mean, I happen to use all Apple products, but uh, I'm sure you could do it with um, Samsung-type products, too. I use Kindle. How many people use Kindle? For read the newspaper, read your books? Well, I've, I, your Kindle account comes with an email address. And what I find is really easy to do is if you have a document or something, a white paper or anything that you want to read, rather than taking magazines around with you or books or anything like that, I can travel light by just simply email this, this stuff to my Kindle account. And it sits there just like a book or a newspaper, and I can read it at my convenience. And I, have a, I can show it to other people. I can forward it to other people. So it's a really convenient way to use uh, your Kindle if you happen to have an account. Now, I use, um, like I said, I use I, I, iMac and uh, iPad. Um, how many people are on Apple? Samsung, probably younger generation. Yep. So I discovered a little shortcut, and I, I, I wish I had put it up on the screen, but I can tell you about it, give you the idea. If you go into your settings on any of these devices, there's a section called Shortcuts. And in Shortcuts... 
what you can do is that you can create, like how many times have you sent uh, a text to somebody that said, OMW, on my way? You know, um, I will confess, I'm, I'm, not a young, I'm not a youngster, so I don't use all the, uh, I still type out the whole word, that's the bottom line. Okay, that, <laughs> so that, that says it right there. But uh, you know, it, there's already a code for, uh, there's already a shorthand for texting. So you can go into your, into your device, go to shortcuts, and you can create a shortcut such as what I did, THX. So here's how I would use the shortcut. In the THX stands for the following paragraph. Thank you for the time that you spent with me today. I really enjoyed seeing you again. I will follow up on the things we discussed as soon as I get back to my office. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, that's what I did. So when I meet with a client, for instance, if I go to a restaurant and I see a client, the client probably gets up and goes to the restroom, I get up and go out to the car. Before they even get out of the restroom, I've already typed in an email to them that said THX, and I typed in THX, the whole paragraph printed instantly. So before they even get in the car, they've already heard from me. And that's just a little tip of the iceberg about how you can use shortcuts and things inside your, your Apple products. You probably, like I said, you can use them in the other types of products as well. And one of the things we've been doing recently is we've been using um, videos. Uh, we had a company, actually, uh, Fannie Mae, in our, in our, uh, is, is located in Washington, D.C. I have a lot of Fannie Mae employees. So what I did, I found out that they're, um, they're offering a, a lump sum payout option on their pension. They're shutting their pension down. So you can either take your fixed benefit without a cost of living, or you can see if it makes sense for you to take the lump sum. So I created, created a video, and I uploaded it to you, YouTube, and then I put it on my LinkedIn account and then I use that to connect with Fannie Mae employees. Now, like I said, I don't really know jack about, um, about technology. I had to get a lot of help from different vendors and things to help me do this, but the point is, is if, if I can learn it, you can learn it. And, and so it's a very effective way to get in front of somebody with a specific message. We stopped sending out um, review letters. Um, we, we would invite people to come in for a quarterly review normally. We'd send a letter to everyone at, by now, you should have received your statements. We'd like to have an opportunity to review these statements with you to make sure our goals and objectives are lined up, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we, I simply do a video, and you can do it on your cam any kind of camera, upload it to YouTube, and then do a broadcast email to your client. And uh, they like that. They get to see me. They get to hear the voice. And even though I might not see them but once a year face-to-face, -face, um, they do have contact with me, which is, which is huge, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But that's the kind of the latest thing we're doing, and it's fun because you could also throw out an idea. Maybe something you heard today from Larry or David talking about, are you tired of paying taxes? Would you appreciate being in a zero tax bracket? You know, and, and you could do a little one minute video on that and send it out to your clients, and I bet you people will respond to that. If you would like to talk more about this, bring your Form 1040 and related documents into Larry Fortenberry's office and have it reviewed to see how we might be able to save you some money. So that's how we can do some of our marketing. It's really cheap to do it, and it takes very little time. So let me speak a little bit about how it's working. Well, I work from home four or five days a week. I have a wireless setup. I do it a minimal amount of space. I live on the waterfront. I'm relaxing. I don't, uh, this may be the second time you'll ever see me in a suit. I think you know when the next time will be. Actually, I'll probably put that in the will. Just don't bury me in a suit. But <laughs> I mean, most of the time, I'm casual. Uh, when the weather's good, it's shorts and uh, flip-flops. And I, but I can still get all the work done. I can still make top of the table every year and get this done because of the efficiencies that technology has afforded us. And I can travel. I can visit my kids. I can visit my grandkids. And I can still I can live in Florida for a month. And I can still be in the business and be productive. Just as, I, just as it would be at home. It just doesn't matter anymore where I am. Clients seem to love it, mainly because I go where they go. So we're down in Florida for the month. I have eight clients in Florida. So we saw them. They came over our house. We went over their house. So we build those deeper relationships. Couldn't do that if I had an office to maintain. I mean, I couldn't. Maybe, maybe other people can. But this allows for more personal time, what I call PT, 
and deeper relationships with people. Because when you sit up late at night at their house or they're over your house and you go beyond a formal business setting, you really go deep with people. So the technology has also allowed me to outsource a lot of things. Like, for instance, the financial planning, as I mentioned. I also don't, I got this uh, idea actually from Randy Scritchfield, who's going to speak later. Uh, I, I outsourced my long-term care business to someone else who specializes in long-term care. And I had the same experience Randy had. I hope I'm not stepping on this uh, talk. But basically, my long-term care revenue went up because the guy's better at it, and he sells more of it than I likely would have. And it's particularly complicated where we live because we live in a three, a tri-state area. So the same contract with one company, might, there might be three different contracts. So I just, I just couldn't, um, I didn't want to spend my time learning, learning about that. So same thing for insurance applications. We don't have another person, but we do use an online service. We use Crump. So we're able to shortcut some of these circuits, some, some of these types of things where it's, a, where it's a commodity type of a sale. So what are the, those are the highs. Those are all the great things about being on the cloud. What are some of the lows? Well, the lows are, um, if you don't have internet access, you're toast. <laughs> I mean, that's just it. So uh, you just go do something. But fortunately, that's not usually an issue. You have to uh, pay attention to your time management because it's easy to get distracted. So you have to be super organized. And I find that's, the, for most people, being organized is a real key differentiator. Scheduling sometimes can be a challenge because we have to organize locations. When are people going to be places, uh, whether it be airlines or, or just travel? Here's a biggie, a big challenge. Turning it off. You know, when you, when you have all this access to technology and all your records and, and all of this, uh, whether you're at home or wherever, it's easy to be on all the time. And it's very important to be off, to turn it off. So it's a challenge for me sometimes. Compliance. I will say most broker-dealers don't get it yet. And, that, you know, they're trying to pull us closer and closer. Uh, so you really have to enlighten um, your, your uh, broker-dealer compliance department. And another thing I learned, too, is that I bought technology that I didn't need. A technology is just a tool. And so I would say don't buy it unless you need it. But if you need it, buy it and spend the money on it. Because you know, I, found, I discovered you can't nickel dime, and wait, you're, nickel dime your way to the top in our business. You just can't do it. You've got to invest in yourself. And you have to ask yourself, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, why would anyone else want to invest in you or with you? It's always about the client. We've been talking about technology, but these are just a means to an end. It's always about the client. It's never about the tools. So anybody have any idea what this is? This is a spaceship from the movie Aliens. It occurred to me, like, here we are. We're 500 years into the future, flying through outer space, some galaxy. And yet no one yet has figured out how to move water from one end of a spaceship to the other, other than a pipe. And that's what I would call something fundamental. It's fundamental. That's how you move water from one end of a place to another. And that's what relationships are. They're fundamental. We need to remember what is important. Now, here we have the hierarchy of value. And as you'll see here, data is the lowest, has the lowest value on this, on this uh, food chain. Data is everywhere. It has very little value for that reason. When you organize the data, it becomes information, and that has a little bit more value. And then if you actually put that information into context, we actually start to get into the knowledge arena. But the most valuable aspect of all is the wisdom arena. Now, here is my value proposition. We provide value through leadership, relationship, and creativity. We provide leadership by giving people direction, and perspective, cutting through all the noise. Relationships is where we build trust relationships so that they know that we're doing all the right things for all the right reasons for them. And then we use the creativity for coming up and giving them opportunities. Technology allows me to focus on a knowledge and wisdom-based business as, and, and relationships as opposed to transactional data and information business, which is a commodity. Clients want brick and mortar engagement, but they want what technology offers them. Now, at the end of the day, tech is not a substitute for a face-to-face -face meeting. 
it's still all about creating raving fans. And this is my uh, gratuitous shot of me playing guitar at MDRT. Um, but it is about that because, like for instance, I don't, I'm not a big Bruce Springsteen fan. I know he is a great artist, I respect that, but I'm more of a Tom Petty guy. So as such, I go to all Tom Petty's concerts, I buy all his t-shirts, I buy his records. I try to build my business around just those people that are my raving fans. And anybody that doesn't fit into that, I certainly understand. But I only want to be playing music to the people that get my music, if you, if you know what I mean. As I said before, tech is not a substitute for a face-to-face -face meeting. And you can't, an email or an online message or a web meeting will never replace a phone call or a handshake or a hug for the emotional connection that you can make. It's always about time together versus the volume of touches. We tend to do email and feel, feel like we touched somebody, but we re really didn't. It's about time together. It's not about IT, information technology. It's about PT, which is the personal touches. It's quality versus quantity. Technology gives me the freedom to have the lifestyle I want, but the, the relationships are, are what allows me to do this. And by the way, research has shown that, uh, F um, Fidelity did some research that showed that advisors that are engaged in technology actually have deeper relationships with their clients. So here's the bottom line. In this age of technology, where we can do almost anything, anywhere, anytime, the question is, how do we maintain the human element, the connections, the memories, the feelings? We should use technology to leverage our time, to increase our efficiency, whether it's in the office or as a mobile advisor, and as a means to a higher level of client engagement. Technology should really just support everything else in your sales process, with the exception of your physical presence and the impact that that has on people. So, what I would say is, explore technology. Turn it on. Use it to be efficient, but then make sure you turn it off. Turn it off and live your life and enjoy people and make connections because the more high tech we become, the more valuable high touch becomes. Thank you.